the reason we come out here was uh, just to kind of talk to you. You're one of the few survivors of the apocalypse, and we were wondering if you could tell us about your experience. Uh, no, I don't want to talk about that. Anyway, I, I would love to talk to you for much longer, but I can I can sort of uh, throw throw you the last question here, and uh, you know if I have any follow up questions, would you be okay me reaching back out to you? Absolutely, I I, I really enjoyed this, and I, and I appreciate the project that you're doing. Um, I think it's I think it's a great thing. All right, so what do you want to know? Okay, so this is kind of a curveball. It's, it's what I ask. Uh, it's the last question I ask every single person I interview. Um, what do you think the meaning of life is? <laughs> oh boy um, I have no clue Tell everybody what we're doing, Sarah We are getting B-roll of Huntington In the industry of the area People are going to think that I asked you To put this on your head And really you just did it on your own This is more fun than Dave Matthews. Oh, oh yeah, we know <laughs> Dave Matthews I'm a, big, I'm a big Dave Matthews fan Love There's him, cross, and then obviously. Jesus. Always gotta have Jesus, Jesus yeah. with the Marshall, you know. The Marshall statue. It's like Jesus, Marshall. Come on, you piece of crap. This is a worthless camera. You're out of it's like focusing on the school behind you. Sarah and I have coronavirus, so uh, we do apologize if the rest of the interviews in this documentary are conducted over the phone. My name is David O'Dell. My name is Ed Wood. My name is Jason Gunn. My name is Andal. My name is Larry Baker. My name is Clarence Williamson. My name is Wesley Self. My name is Charlie Bowen. My name is Ben. My name is Eric Kutcher. My name is Johnny Johnson. And my name is Seth Havens. My name is Kelly Johnson. My name is Dr. E. Del Kroll. I go by Dell. And I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. And I'm from Vietnam. And I'm from West Virginia. And I'm a West Virginian. I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. I'm a West Virginian. I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. And I'm a West Virginian. Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian Morris. This is my wonderful wife, Sarah, and we have been working on this project for uh, pretty close to a year now. We started last spring, 2020, and we had great hopes, high hopes for, uh, for this. We were really, really ambitious. We wanted to cover West Virginia politics, West Virginia culture, West Virginia history, food, how people spend their time, why do people live here, what do people hate about the state, what do people love about the state, and it did not take long for us to realize that is way too much for uh, an, you know one documentary. Uh, maybe someone out there will do it, um, and that's actually part of the reason we, uh, we did this at all. Um, we wanted to inspire other artists, uh, filmmakers, painters, poets, journalists, what, teachers, educators, whatever your art is, um, we wanted to inspire other people to um, tell West Virginia's story. And uh, so with all that said, we decided to only publish our favorite question that we asked everyone, which was what they thought the meaning of life was. We got some great answers. I think I'm really proud of how this came out and I'm really proud of you for all the work that you put into it. And we've met some wonderful people and if this does nothing else for you. If you have an idea or a project that you've been wanting to pursue, just go ahead and do it, even if it's not exactly how you want it to turn. If it doesn't turn out exactly the way that you want, because you'll be proud of it in the end, hopefully. Because I'm proud of, I'm proud of this. And I hope hey, you guys enjoy. Hey, you know, we, we made a lot of mistakes. There's a million things that uh, I would do differently next time. Um, but that's just life. You learn and um, you do better next time. Yeah, this is a learning experience. And it was a lot of fun. 
yeah, so uh, we hope you enjoy um, whatever this is. Meaning of life, gosh, man, the meaning of life, the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Yeah. Well, it's 42. Well, the meaning of life is you do what you're asked to do. I was born and I was raised to respect your elders. You respect your elders and they'll, and they'll respect you. I think it's simple for me. It's just contentment. But then that comes back to you mentioning folks who aren't content. It's a great journey until now. It's up and down. It's happiness and sadness together. But I really enjoy it. That's what life should be. I, I kind of think it's to live a full, happy, meaningful life uh, to the best. And, and full and meaningful is your definition. If full and meaningful is large number of kids never leave this little town, then I wish you the best. That's, you know, if meaningful is traveling the world, if meaningful is each individual person's definition. The meaning of life, uh, I'm going to use Forrest Gump saying, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You should be live a meaningful, happy life. I, I would go with sort of a disclaimer of, uh, the idea of uh, without hurting other people. Um, uh, you know, I really want to do something dangerous. Well, that's fine, just don't hurt anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. sure. That's my meaning of life, I suppose. It seems really simple, but I think that the purpose of life is, is contentment and, and to strive to look to help other people find their peace and their contentment. Because there's going to be highs and lows, and if you can get that um, get that baseline running a little higher than, than average, you're doing better than the rest of the world. There are two things that I think people should do that you must do. The first thing is about family, because since I study far away from my family, I realized that you think you have a lot of time with your family, but you're not. Like I'm just 20 years old and now I'm far away from them. I don't know if I'm gonna go back to live with them for a longer time, I'm gonna go to another country, I don't know. So as long as you still have your family to take care, to spend your time with, try to do that. Express your love with the one that you love because you're not gonna know how life gonna go. If you're not happy with what you're doing, do something else. You're in charge of your own destiny. And we'll do a Joe Dirt. Life's a garden, dig it. I don't know what the meaning of life is, but I can say that this is what I hope to be able to do. I want to continue. I, w I want to always be a lifelong, lifelong learner. I want to continue to learn and to grow as a person. What's the meaning of life? Happiness. Happiness. I think that's a loaded answer because what's happiness? One of the I'm very interested in Eastern religions and, and that sort of thing, and, and to me, the older you get, the more you realize that you need to be mindful. That so much of the unhappiness in the world, you're either unhappy about things that haven't happened yet, and you think that you know what's going to happen, or you regret what happened in the past. Neither of those things you have any influence over. The Buddha talks about, I love it because Henry Thompson borrowed the line, but it was called fear and loathing that you fear the future and you loathe the past and neither of those things you can do anything about. Yeah, that's a great question. What is the meaning of life? Um, to me, I actually have an answer to that. Like, the meaning of life to me is to help other people. The meaning of life is to progress humanity forward. You know, like that's what life is, it's humanity. So, um, and not just humans, obviously there's other life as well, like animals and all that, but how can we make the world around us better? 
Um, to me, it's it's really that simple. It's 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 um, how can you take the skills that you have individually um, to help humanity grow and progress um, and make the world a better place. The meaning of life. Oh my gosh. Yeesh. Um, finding what you were made to do. Truly, like, what were you made to do on this earth? Were you made to be an artist? Were you made to be a doctor? Because when you don't, like, you never find your place. You wander, never feel whole, you never feel accomplished because you're always searching for like that next thing. I think that truly like when you find not only like who you are, but when you find out what you're supposed to do in this life, that's like your meaning. Like that's the purpose of why you're living. The meaning of life. Um, I think that, uh, I think that your life is as, as unique as your fingerprint um, and what you make of it is your choice and your choice only um, you can have a lot of people along your road uh, the path that you choose help you or bring you down but at the end of the day uh, it is your choice about of how how you live your life and what you make of it what do you think the meaning of life is <laughs> Oh boy, um, I have no clue. Um, I tend to be somebody who uh, who agrees with that idea that the universe doesn't owe you an explanation. Because yeah. how sad is that? Truly, I mean, how sad would that be? Like, why would you live? What's the purpose of living then if you don't have a beginning and a purpose in the beginning of that story. I mean, like we always do something in life because there's a purpose to it. Like I work out because I want to look nicer or I go to school because I want a degree and I want to make money or I have children because I want to be a parent. Like there's always this spark of something. Okay, like this is what starts that. I mean, I can't imagine living every day thinking I was just plopped here randomly. Yeah. With that said, that I don't believe the universe owes you an explanation, I don't really think there is some grand cosmic plan. I do think it's possible to find uh, meaning in your life by finding work that you find valuable, and the joy will come from that. Uh, that seeking joy oftentimes will lead you down uh, perilous roads, but, um, uh, but finding something that, that gives your life meaning allows you to contribute and give back and make genuine connections with other people, um, I think that will bring you to um, something that, that gives your gives your life meaning, even though it's not really the meaning of life. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. I think just uh, the meaning is just finding your peace and happiness here while you're here and building a relationship with God, in which I'm, I'm a believer in God, Jesus Christ, but um, I think enjoying your time when it's hurt, you know, which you can. Obviously, there's a lot of bad things that happen here, but um, just finding what he put you here for and enjoying that and building a relationship to be able to, and, and to be able to uh, make people's lives around you a little bit better. And uh, hopefully along the way, you know, have a good time, I guess. And, and I think that goes for non-believers and believers. I would not just like categorize, right. like, oh, you only find your purpose because you're a Christian. Right. Um, that's just my, that's just my right. belief. Right. And me. I mean. Uh, life to me is doing the best I can for and, uh, at what I'm doing and do the best for the people that I know and I can help out. And uh, uh, just living a happy life is knowing that I've done something every day maybe to help somebody else out. Uh, other than that, I mean, that, that's life to me. I mean, you know, life, life is what you make out of it. You can have a good life or a bad life. You can become a criminal. You can uh, disobey every law in the state of West Virginia or any other state in the Union. But, you know, I wasn't like it. I tried to obey everything, and I was, I was brought up to, like I said, to, to do, do, do the best I can in life, you got to take care of life. And uh, if your neighbor needs help, go help him out. And uh, I hope some days, you know, they come and help me out, which they do. I have, I have plenty of people help me out here. I, I had a lady just the other day. It's hard for me sometimes to get my grocery into the house, 
She lives across the street here, her, it's her daughter, her daughter. She said, now, Mr. Winston, any time if you need help getting your groceries, you can call and I'll help you put them in the house. She don't live here in town. She lives five miles out of town. Now, that's just what kind of people you got in Gilman County. And, of course, the people right around here close with I, I'm not afraid to call anybody right here close. The people I don't even know, and they will come and help you out. Uh, but the key part about life is living it how you want to be, how you want to live your life. Don't let anyone else live your life for you because it's your life it's not their life and once you're done with that life then you don't want to have any regrets what you need to do to be happy is to appreciate what's going on now um, so I try really hard to embrace that I think that truly you have to be at peace with yourself knowing that happiness only comes from you no one will make you happy, no money will make you happy, no car, no child, nothing. You have to be happy with yourself. And until that happens, you'll never feel like you have a meaning because happiness is kind of like the meaning of everything. I had been reading about mindfulness and the book said, you can't feel pain in the moment. And I said, oh, come on now. So I'm sitting there and the, the dentist is getting ready to drill my tooth. And I can hear the drill and I begin to tense up hasn't done anything yet, he's just turned on the drill. But the sound of it and the smell of it has made my shoulders tense up and my knees tense up. And I said, wait a minute, he hasn't done anything. So I let my shoulders go. And uh, then he got a little closer and I could smell it. My shoulders tense up, my knees tense up. I said, damn it, he hasn't done anything. So I released my shoulders. And he drilled my tooth. And then he pulled the drill away and I said, did that hurt? Well, what the hell does it matter now? It's over. He's finished. It's right. It didn't hurt when he was doing it. It only hurt in my anticipation of him doing it or my trying to figure out later whether it hurt or not. <laughs> you know? So I thought, okay, wouldn't it be weird if, if, if my ultimate test of mindfulness was getting my tooth drilled? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we all have different skills. So for me, my skill, you know, is, is teaching and coaching. Um, but somebody else's skill might be, um, you know, cooking like my dad's was. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever your skill might be is how can you, how can you A, learn a skill and master it, and then B, take that skill and, and help people um, become, uh, make the world a better place. And I think that's the meaning of life. That's why, I mean, and I totally agree that like, being a believer, we feel a different way about that. Um, but I mean, I would hope that people that are not believers know that they have a purpose and that they have meaning right. and their life is something I just, that I, is desired to live through. And as long as you're happy, uh, I'm a firm believer in that. No matter what you do, whether you work at a restaurant, you're an officer, you know, you look work at a library, whatever you may do, um, I don't see anybody different. A lot of people, you know, put police officers up on a pedestal, but we're no different than anybody else. We just deal with people's problems, but I'm happy with what I do and as long as as long as you live your life to the fullest and at the end of the day when you go to sleep, if it's the last day you live, you can say, I'm happy. I've you know, I've got a lot of friends. I'm very pleased with what I've done. Um, granted there may be more that you want to do, but like I said, you may close your eyes and not wake up and did you you know, did you live your life to the fullest? And I'm I'm a firm believer of that. I, I go through rough patches myself, but at the same time, I capitalize on a lot of uh, big things in my life and make the best of them, document them, and, you know, have the memories. Um, you know, people are always going to make mistakes. Nobody's going to ever be perfect. But if we can continue to grow as people, then I think we've achieved the best that we can possibly achieve for our lives. Yeah, you know, uh, because of working with uh, all these ancient philosophers, as I do, um, it's, I, I think one of the reasons why, why studying, say, Stoicism and, and Epicureanism, um, uh, and to some extent, you know, the, uh, the works of other great philosophers, um, is it, it shows you that you can have meaning in a world where um, you don't have the idea of uh, a happy afterlife uh, baked in. Because I think... One of the issues that a lot of people have, uh, at least I have, because I, you know, I grew up very Catholic, um, and one of the things that um, 
uh, I see as a paradigm in our society is that, you know, we have this very strong uh, Christian tradition in America, uh, which has a bunch of things built into it. You know, an idea of uh, a God who's watching, um, that your moral choices will determine where you go after you're dead, um, that there are certain, you know, baked in sets of morals that everyone should obey, like the Ten Commandments. Um, but when you read these these guys who are, you know, BC, you know, before before Christ, um, and you're seeing that they are also wrestling with these same issues of, of, of meaning um, before they have that sort of baked in solution, um, that it, uh, it, it gives a, um, I don't think it necessarily uh, uh, means you have to throw out, say, whatever religious beliefs you have, but that you can see that meaning can be had and value can be had in life, um, even if you're not built into the system. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it, it gives, that's probably that gives me a, a different perspective on it that you might then think some other folks have, basically because, you know, I, Epicurus um, is, it talks about the, the danger of, of, of chasing, uh, chasing pleasure. You know, that the, the high is never worth a hangover or, you know, Stoics um, trying to, to tell you how to, to figure out where your place is in life and then fulfill that role um, in, a, uh, in the best possible way. You know, that, that you, you can't have meaning um, just created on a human scale. I think people have to find certain things that they like to do in life. Um, personally, I enjoy higher education. I like to see young people learn. So that gives me some purpose as a job. Um, at home, I, I fiddle with engines, um, work on engines. I like riding four wheelers. I do a lot of gardening, you know, those sort of things. And, and it seems simple, but I get fulfillment out of those. And I feel content. Um, so whatever that contentment is, whether it's finding the right relationships um, with, with, with people, um, whether it's uh, starting a family, whether it's um, you know, some people may content delivering, be content delivering pizza their entire life. Life is full of random meetings or random acquaintances. It's just, don't ever expect anything because you're always going to be blown away. Expect the unexpected. Uh, you can never predict where you're going to be at 10, 20 years from now. So don't ever try to plan that far ahead. It's useless. Just think in the present. What are you going to do now? And then oh, you always want to go for the short term in the future. Like, you want to make sure you have a job. As again, we're talking about West Virginia and the lack of jobs. But you always want to make sure you're socially protected. Uh, you have a home, someplace to go back to. Just a safe space. Even if that's a vehicle that you own. Um, another thing is always try your best. Always oh, have to fire in yourself. Do the thing that you like, choose the thing that you like, and try to do it with all you can. Because at the end of the time, after all, you're not going to feel regrets because you didn't do that. Yeah.
I'm finishing up editing this uh, project. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and um, I just <laughs> I just got really emotional um, editing and put, uh, finishing things up because um, you know every we interviewed a bunch of people and um, you know all of them are older than me so maybe they just have a different perspective maybe they have a different outlook on life but um, not one of them said it was their significant other and um and it, that would have been my answer, like, instantly. <laughs> it's you, baby. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. What the fuck? <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just... I, um... <sighs> oh, sweet. What? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just love you a lot. everything. I hope you enjoyed the documentary or whatever the hell it is. I just I don't even know if it's a documentary at this point. It's just a, it should, it was just a fun project. Um, and we didn't use 95% of the footage. But it was a fun time. It was a good time. We had a fun time making it. Um, Alright, I love you guys. I'll uh, see you in the next one.